Hello, this is Patrick W. Crawford, MUAC Productions, and this is a little different than anything I've put out before, but this is a collection of the game development that I have done with Blender since I first downloaded the program. Um, I haven't been doing really anything with it recently, but I thought, hey, I may as well make a video showing that I've done this, spent time on it. Why not showcase it? So, when I first downloaded Blender, however many years ago that was, only a couple, um, it was to supplement my stop-motion animation. The forum that I was a part of, I saw a number of other people using Blender, supplementing their uh, stop-motion with these crappy, but sort of the same general crappy level of CGI, and I thought, hey, I should check out to see how they did that. So I downloaded Blender, was horribly confused by it, and shoved it away, because <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. I couldn't even like learn how to select something. So, But after a couple of minutes, uh, a couple months later, I came back to it, I started watching tutorials, and um, if I recall, at one point, I came across the tutorial, and like at one point it said, press P to play, and I'm like, play what? And of course, that's when I found out that Blender has a game attention, a uh, game engine, there we go, game engine attached to it. And so then I became horribly distracted, learned nothing about how to combine uh, CGI and other types of footage, and started making games. So that's what this is. This is like the uh, first project I created, um, <laughs> Box Escape. Um, I don't have the original file or the 2D version. This is, um, as I'll see in a moment as I open it, um, unfortunately it's full screen and I was clever enough to make it uh, split the screen so it was cross-eye 3D. Clever enough, not really, I didn't even get the titles right. Um, the idea of this is if you were to cross your eyes, you would see the images, the two left, right, and images in 3D. If you can't, don't worry about it. I just don't have a 2D version to show. So yeah, a little introduction. Um, so here I made a little animation intro of the keys and controls. If you don't remember what they are now, then you will not be able to figure it out later because I don't have a menu showing them. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of like the first anything I've done with Blender that took more than like 10 minutes to make. Press enter to start. And now we see our beloved hero or thing. It's a box. A cardboard box. A shiny cardboard box. Apparently I didn't know what specularity was to turn it down, but oh well. So yeah, camera controls. Close? Far? Put it that close, you really can't see anything. You can barely see anything when it's this far out. Probably not helping the fact that the screen is cropped in this vertical 3D thing. So anyways, um, we're in this half-textured room. I saw an orb, I've just pressed this down. Um, this is kind of like the first thing is I try experimenting with logic. If I slowly rotate the camera around, you see, oh look, there's... Well, I know it's a door, but maybe you didn't guess that after a while. But, so you go to the other side of the room, you hit this orb off of its pedestal. And then, if you were looking towards you would see the animation of the door opening. Whoopee. So yeah, it's it's really nothing in, impressive, remotely impressive, like camera goes through walls and things. Um, something else I added, I remember, is like one of these, if you hit the, the yeah, this one probably, boom, yeah, if you hit the um, top thing, a coin pops out. You're going to have like the box collect coins for whatever reason, but never figured that out. I spent time on it. Um, then we go down the stairs, down to this level here. God. Um, oh look, a blue orb, you touch that one, goes away, and now we have the ability to fly. <laughs> it's a flying cardboard box in a uncompleted house, and now it's glitching out at the flame, frame rate, great. Well, anyways, obviously, if <laughs> this isn't a complete game itself, otherwise it could just fly and be out of the house now. Look, it even says bottom on the bottom. It's clever, right? So yeah, as you can see, um, lots of modeling, <laughs> lots of modeling. Um, attempts at modeling were made here. I had intentions to make the game, oh god, lost and confused, make the game much larger, but never did because I realized, wow, oh, this is really not good at all, but hey, it's my first project. I had fun creating it, I guess. <laughs> there you go, box. That was the first game I created. So then I was doing various other tests and what's not when I came across the idea I think I was messing around with like the physics of trying to create a car, and I couldn't figure it out at all, and like I couldn't get it to go in a normal car where it has like friction 
um, perpendicular to the motion of travel. So, like, it was basically just slipping everywhere. And so, hey, why don't I make a drifting game? So that's what I did. So another full screen created by me, Patrick Crawford, and never even bothered, like, never even got to creating the title for the game. Like, the that's what that little square is supposed to be there. So anyways, um, this one I actually put more of, like, an intelligent system into, like, a menu, um, password, that I can remember what they are. Um, I think I had it so if you just typed anything and pressed enter, if it was wrong, it would just bring you to level one. So that's what this is. Um, so it's, like, controls, gas brakes, doing yada yada. And this says the password here, so that actually is customized for each level. And by each level, I mean the two that I created. <laughs> so, level one. Please allow a few seconds to load. The timer starts on movement. So basically what the game does is you are this car and, hey look, it's drifting all over the place because I couldn't figure out how to program a normal car movement. Which is why I created the game. Clever, right? So the idea is you're trying to go around this course, but if you accidentally knock into like one of these stacks of dominoes, the um, if one of the top sort of perpendicular dominoes hits the ground, then it um, that's a domo top as I call it, it um, registers as, oh, you hit the wall, game over, try again. And so you can either play this game basically to try and not, hit, like, basically reach the end as quickly as you can, or if you want to, you could play it so that you could try and, like, knock over as many of the down tops as you could in one go or something. So, yeah, finish level one, press enter to complete, even add a little animation. So enter level two. You see the password changed. The level is <laughs> some blurry. I guess this, I think this is supposed to be like six forty by four eighty resolution. So yeah, <laughs> this is level two. Um, allow a few seconds to load. Basically, the reason for that is because initially all these blocks are um, being calculated with physics because they drop ever so slightly, and so the game is like kind of stalls for a second if you try and move. So if you just wait like a second, then it goes away. But um, I, at the time, I didn't figure out a way to like fix that. So yeah, this is um, the second level. It's a little more complex, a little wider. Like ooh, a narrow spot. Ooh 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 ooh. <laughs> then you see, oh no, there's like blocks in the middle. Um, some of these are like kind of yeah, like weird weird things go ha go on here. Like I didn't even touch those, and they're falling over. Um, so yeah, that's Boxes, not Box Escape, that's Tomino Drip, the first version, if I um, remember one of the other passwords. I think this was one. Of course it was. QWERTY. There we go. So now we see we have like this little orb here, that means I now have <laughs> turbo speed, of course. That was important. So now if you press and hold, you go faster. Probably too fast to actually go around the corner. Fantastic. And so, yeah, I can see as I hit the side, um, some more of these fall down, so I got 15 down blocks. It kind of turns out that, yeah, as you see, um, ones that I don't touch at all will also fall. So if I just let the car sit here long enough, this number will just go up to, like, hundreds, because, like, the physics acts as a chain reaction. So, like, if the physics here is enabled, it enables physics there, and there, and there, and eventually just knock everything down, so... It, it's not even really a challenge to get as many dominant tops as it is just like sitting there and waiting for them to all fall down, but you know, whatever. So yeah, on the second level I um, created it um, so that like this turn you could barely make it through using the turbo boost. No, I was able to get on that first time. Um, for some reason, I used up too. It's a bit buggy. And so, yeah. Just kind of in tune. Like, the idea is that somewhere eventually you would be able to actually get it as an upgrade to get this turbo, but I hadn't actually added that in. So, the only other thing I added to this game is um, yet another upgrade. Of course. Whack. That's the password. So, yeah, this thing is like Uber Speed or something. So it makes your car go very quickly. It's like it basically just launches it, boom, and like explosions and stuff. And so now you can see the floor and everything's just falling down. So yeah, that was Domino Drift, the first version. So after I created that game, 
Um, I, obviously, I stopped. I only created two levels because, like, yeah, it's not really going anywhere. I wanted to try out new things. I was learned about the um, car um, simulator in Blender. What's, well, I mean, what's it called? The um, vehicle wrapper. That's what it was. And so I started creating another game that I didn't have another name for, but called it Duck How Drive. I'll come back to that one later because that one I worked on over a large span of time and in the middle of creating that one I created a second version of Domino Drift which I actually created as a um, present for uh, one of my friends <laughs> made a game for him so you create a shortcut for maximize very useful so yeah slow animation duck hug gaming this so this is a better graphics version basically of the same game that you just saw and you can see it actually in, um, includes two of the first like major modeling projects I set for myself. In the background, you can sort of see the Lotus Elise I made, and then the main car of the game is the Mini Cooper. And so this one has a slightly more elegant title screen. You can like scroll around, and it goes to different parts of the animation. Um, split screen, yeah. Like I say, it's well, it's not so much that it's a work in progress as it is a work not progressing. So a WNP is what I would title this. But, um, so I added, yeah, I didn't add options yet. Um, credits. I figured out how to do scrolling credits to go through. That was fun. And yeah, like I said, it was a birthday present for one of my friends. Um, yeah, so single player. So again, I added, um, menu controls. That took a while to figure out. Doing different like layer objects. Um, um, so yeah, let's go to the first level. So the first thing you notice is this time I have a loading screen. So that basically removes the purpose of the um, please wait two seconds that I had in the previous version of the game. It will force everything to basically the scene is loaded in the background when that message is displayed in front of the camera, so that the physics of the block settles down, and then you have options to control the cars. So it. It, it it will start immediately once you press any button. And so here we are. So the better graphics, you have a more detailed timer at the bottom. This car, this more detail on the blocks and whatnot. And yeah. And you have a little more of an animation at the end. You can see I actually even put people inside. Little creepers. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's more detailed end screen um, and whatnot. And then you go to the next level. So the... Although this is called Domino Drift, um, because I was still, I was learning programming for the first time, I'm barely using it at all, really. And so, like, I didn't know how to use the um, vehicle wrapper very well, and you notice the, the car basically isn't drifting unless I, like, let go of the gas. I programmed it so that if you could make a corner quicker by spinning around by letting off the gas, the back wheel spin, but, like, in general, like, the car isn't really spinning at all. Or drifting, so it's more like just domino drive around maze than domino drift, but oh well, whatever. Um, yeah, lots of camera obstruction. So I made this one a little more challenging. It could go quite quickly and then like mess up or not, but yeah. So let me just get to the next level here. Ooh, that's a close one. All right, so for the next level, like I said in the previous version, I was gonna set it up with a way to upgrade or like advance. And so that we get the first instance of that here. Going up this ramp, you see like that, um, oh, it's gonna, this is gonna take forever, but uh, you see a, um, a floating icon. And so that's basically the first upgrade you remember from the last game. Remember that? It's a rendition of that first orange uh, upgrade to turbo speed. Um, this will probably take a while to actually get it to work, because, like, I made it so it was diff... But nope, nope, oh, did I... Oh. Are we good? Are we good? Alright, so. Um, I didn't set it off. <laughs> I guess um, sometimes when the domino tops don't hit the ground properly, they don't send a message saying that ends the... um ends your control, so I got away with that. Usually it takes forever to get past that ramp because I've inconveniently placed all of the uh, domino tops right underneath where you fall down. So, now if I were to press backspace to replay the um, level, 
I would have turbo speed, and you have a little nifty bar at the bottom there. So here I've I've still done, learned some program to be able to do things like that, but um, it makes it a little easier. You know, you have the bar it goes down as you. Oh god. Okay, now I'm actually drifting. So I made it so it does drift more when you're using turbo. So I guess that's yeah, it's still somewhat drifty. I guess so I guess you can use the name still. Um, so I got the upgrade again. So now if I go, then. So if you saw the icon, it was a uh, timer, so like at the bottom of the screen. So basically, as I've just done it again, you notice that after I've used turbo, it's it's refilling the bar, so I can use it and it'll replenish. So like if you have a longer level, then it, you can uh, use it up in the beginning and it will return. So once again I've got another upgrade if you saw that and it was the symbol for a lotus like we saw in the beginning so now if I were to restart it I will have the upgraded car the lotus nifty right and yeah so I scaled it kinda of funny and it actually is not anything like the light and versatile you know good performance car as it actually is in real life because I tried to make it just somehow different to the Mini Cooper so like noticeably different and it just didn't really turn out well it drifts more it seems heavier and doesn't really work very well but um if so if you see now though again on this level there's one more upgrade originally the idea was that I was gonna have these upgrades um oh did I actually get it wow um I was gonna have these upgrades dispersed through different levels throughout the game, but I just wanted to program it in early so that if I were to actually create the other levels, which I guess I knew I wouldn't because this is the last level I created, um, in the other levels you would be able to get those upgrades. So yeah, like I said, I scaled the car wider as well, so I might not even be able to get through here. God. Ah, turbo. There we go. Alright. So, now I have four to, well, the fourth level is just empty space, but um, I can choose the different levels, I can choose a different car, I can choose a different turbo speed. So, like, if I were to go to level one with the Lotus, it's one thing I thought was just kind of funny. So, you know how you have to go around the circle for the, um, with the Mini Cooper to get through this level? That's when you actually drift more with the, this car. But, uh, with the Lotus and U Uber speed, all I have to do is forward and spacebar and just troll right through. And uh, you reach the finish before any of the um, blocks um, fall to the ground. So you can just finish it in like two and a half seconds flat. So, um, the only other thing about this game I added was, of course, 3D. And let's see, oh, let's see if I can remember the shortcut key I added for it. Maybe something like this. I have really no idea. So, let's, let's see if that works. Um, yeah. 3D. So again, if you were to cross your eyes, then you would uh, see depth perception. Oops. Parallax displacement. Ooh. Oh, yeah, and of course, I never actually finished um, combining it so that there was full 3D interface. So like, only one of the camera angles changes to be the front camera, and the text overlay is not in 3D at all, which is why I never properly added it. Um, then the other thing I created was multiplayer. Let's see if I can remember that shortcut key. Something like that. Now if I restart it. Yeah, here we go. So, oh. Well, that's interesting. They're both... Okay, well, something got max mixed up with it using 3D already, I guess. But normally the camera will follow the second car control, and the bottom screen would follow this car and the top screen would follow this car, but I guess because I went into the 3D mode first, because I reused and changed the cameras around, and funny funny things were happening, basically. If I were to try this, restart again, then I've, I've just changed the um, second car, so now it's the um, a yellow Mini Cooper, with no passengers or drivers or anything. So yeah, that's the basis of this game. Domino Drift. Alright, so now on to the other product I mentioned. Um, this was one that... Oh, which one is it? 
uh, this one, sure. So this is a project that I worked on for a longer period of time. Um, this was originally actually why I modeled the Lotus, which was the first model I created. And um, I just liked the idea of an open driving game. And so I wanted to create a larger map, which had more space for you just to drive around and explore, sort of. Because I always like those sort of games the most. Um, a problem with the game, though, is that at the time I gave absolutely no consideration to optimization. So, like, I used a very large number of high resolution textures, or at least high resolution textures, and I was compelled to add normal maps basically to everything. And so, on the computer I was making the game for, I almost couldn't run it at all. The uh, laptop I'm using now is quite a bit faster, so it loaded it pretty quickly and it runs pretty smoothly, but my other laptop, it would take like literally five minutes for it to get to the stage where I'm able to actually control a car and have responsive movement. <laughs> So, um, so this is just like the starting area, um, go up here, can't see it because the plane's invisible, yeah, up here, oop, oop, it's gonna make it, yeah, there we go, so, um, like a little secret area, Let's see if I actually, let me maximize the window, there we go, so, um, I added a number of controls for this car, so, um, if you notice, unlike Domino Drift, um, the wheels can turn smoothly in and out. Um, although if I just let go of the turning key, it resets back to center, because otherwise it takes too long to go back to the center and you can't turn properly. So a few other things I could fix on that. Um, I added a sort of drift control, so it's sort of like a back brake, so I can like spin out like that if I choose, pressing control. Um, shift is sort of like, so this is normal speed, normal acceleration, going to stop and if I, um, press shift, it's like turbo speed basically, so you get going quite fast. Um, I added a few camera controls, so Alt-Z, this is one camera view, and you can always just press Z to look back behind you. It's another camera view, it's a bit closer and parented straight with the camera, again Z to look back. And then this is like the more general follow view camera. And I tried adding Z to look back, but it always is a funky angle, so I need something else to be done with it. 360. Alright, and then you saw just there momentarily, there is a, um, an air cam. So if it's gonna jump. Alright, so if you notice I get some air like here, you get this perspective of an aerial view of the camera. Well, usually it's a bit buggy because it has to be sensing that it's like attached to um or the car is near or touching a ground property and sometimes it bugs out and like you know shifts between normal and not um air cam so i usually just turn it off um so yeah this is the uh you're you've already seen most of the world i modeled um just a few houses um if i let's see if i go into this camera view oop oop so if you look at the brick texture here, well, eh, I guess it's not that high resolution, but you can see that it's probably more detailed than it needs to be. You're never going to be that close to the wall. And you can see the short, sort of um, shininess to it. That's the normal map. So that basically makes it appear that there's more geometry um, interacting with the light than there actually is. So like literally everything. I added cheap, crappy you know, normal maps do that probably make it look worse than anything because they're not done properly. But, um, so another thing I add to this, you see there's sort of like a gloss to the car. That was one of the later things I added that I, oh, it makes it look nice, shiny. Normally it's difficult to do that in a game. You can't have actual reflection, so this is basically taking an environment map and mapping it, um, the quicker algorithm just to it's more like preview 3d so it's not actually reflecting the scene it's also reflecting another image that's independent of the scene um so yeah i've added a few physics objects like these barriers you can sort of break them apart and like interact with the cones and whatnot and this is like one of the secret areas i added going to like driver cockpit view 
Um, and then you kind of see like the uh, open gates of the world that I did not finish. Yeah, it's all right. Um, this is an, a reset key, so you just go back to the center, go back into this view. Um, yeah. So originally, when I was creating this game, obviously, aside from the fact that I want to make it a lot larger, because you see the highways kind of going off in a couple different directions, and then uh, there's like another side over here. Oop, 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 oop. Ah, all right. Um, it's it's not that large ultimately. But um, I also wanted to add like other cars and like not necessarily missions, but like things just to do. But um, the the file started glitching out quite badly. <laughs> like things that worked when I first created the project stopped working later on. And one of those things I can show you, I'll just go over here. Uh, was parenting. Parenting is um, basically so like so like for example this the car you see right now has again not optimized at all it has like ten ten something thousand vertices and um, but the physics does not is not calculated based on that many vertices it would just the game would not move at all there's what's called a collision or box or bound which is um, invisible but that's what the physics reacts to this actual car that you see is parented or basically attached to this invisible body which is interacting with the physics and this inv and the visible body doesn't interact with anything at all it's called an occluder so parenting is really important for gaming for that reason because you can have visible things with a higher poly count um the attached to lower poly counts actually interact with the physics but um parenting started freaking out like you notice um these three signs i was trying to add signs like you know some details like that but that's when it started breaking down completely um and adding like signs that if you were to run into it you would um see like a bent sign after running into it or something but all so the three signs you see in front of me here they um they're also attached to invisible collision bounds which are boxes but when I get like close or touch, like the box is not moving. I like I've tried to debug this like crazy. The box isn't moving, but the parented object is so, like it's it's just freaking. It's like moving all over the place. And if I actually touch it, it just disappears. And yeah, <laughs> so a lot of things like that just stopped working completely. Um, textures started disappearing and getting oddly mapped. Originally, I I also had it. So that if you um, were in the car and you hit something with a high enough speed, then you would um, you would see damage or like a new mesh. That like for example, the front of the car, the mesh that makes up the hood would get replaced with a deformed mesh. So like it actually impacted something. But again, the um, the parenting was messed up, so things were moving around and not staying one to one with the actual vehicle. Uh, the same thing with the steering wheel. I had that moving with the car as well at one point, but um, the, the steering wheel wasn't like actually stuck to the car. So, and this is just like um, the highway um, that I created. So I can get to the other side. <laughs> Basically, the only thing I did with my own games was like find all the like messed up pieces and like exploit it, like. Try and get to the other side of the uh, highway before the end. Ah, uh, go on. It's gonna work. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, more of these physics objects. Um. So yeah, basically, what I realized from this game, which inspired a project that I never really got underway was the part that I actually liked most about what I created this game was um uh messing around with like jumps and whatnot and speeding down the highway. I had like funny um billboards and things as well. Um and so uh, so basically what I wanted to do after I created this project oh you can see I added a little thing here. If you go too slow it doesn't go through but if you go fast enough yeah, get through the into the sewers. 
But um, anyways, what I was saying. Um, I wanted to make another game that was basically just like a highway running game. And for that, I wanted to create car AI. And so, I guess I can actually talk a bit more about that project later, what little I did of it. Um, yeah, so I'll talk about that later. So this is the sewer. You see the car is kind of like freaking out and drifting all over the place. Um, this is something that I was trying to make work with Domino Drift, but couldn't quite. And that was like stable drift. So um, whenever the car is over water or grass, the um, friction or like basically grip of the tires is decreased a lot, which is realistic, but at the same time, if you're going fast, once you start turning a little bit, you can't come out of a turn. You just end up spinning out, and it does weird things. And so it's it's not horribly realistic, and it just makes controlling of the <laughs> controlling of the car just like impossible. And so, yeah, guys, weird turns are going on right now. All right, there we go. And so I needed to find a way to like make a function of how much the grip. Um, was like decreased for a speed and I just wasn't able to figure it out. So that's basically it for this game. I had like a menu system as well except nothing actually worked. Uh oh. Zoom. What happened? It's probably- oh no, re okay, so I got the reset one. So like I didn't actually update the GUI at all to match what the selection was being done. So yeah, this is Duckhow Drive, or basically unnamed. So the only other projects that I had done, and I'm not even sure if I have it here, was a few like artificial intelligent tests, which, um, so like for example, a a can, no, a like little robot searching for certain colored cans. Um, so now I found. Um, the file that I was referring to before, the um, sort of like project that I started but didn't go very far with. Um, we see another car set up here. Um, this was where I was trying to set up the AI of vehicles. Um, apparently this is an older version. Hold on. Let's see if anything works. Nope, doesn't. Alright, um, let's try this one. And so basically I was testing yeah, they keep they even keep their wheels this time. Great. I was testing how many um like bodies could use um the sort of suspension messages so I can keep adding more cars to ridiculous numbers. And it's, and it didn't slow down too much, so that was like a test saying, okay, I can have like X number of cars on the highway and it won't completely glitch out. Oop. And then I was also testing um, things like the AI. So like, if you watch the cars, they uh, they try and stop when they notice there another car is in front of them. Um, but let's add a few more cars, shall we? Um, I can. I'm using the number keys to like change the mode of the car. So like, if I just pressed one, I believe that's like park mode. So if I run into one, it will like it's it has its wheels sort of like locked down, so it won't move too much. Two, um, the cars will match the movement of my car, and so if I turn my wheels all the way and then press three, which enables their um, the AI part of the car, um, they will just keep with that turned car, but they will um, interact with their own. I don't know. <laughs> um, Intelligence that I program for them. So like for example, um, here, oop, guess not. <laughs> um, oh, and there it goes. If there is a certain amount of distance and speed difference between two cars, or um, the front of one of these um, artificial intelligence cars and a wall or something, it will just simply break. But if there's not enough distance or it's too much of a difference in speed, then it will kind of like spin out like that. Like kind of go to the side. But you have to get the conditions right to like show that. If I restart, yeah, I add that. So three, we'll just go forward. One, add another car. 
two, back it up. Now add three. So maybe that car will spin out. Yeah, so you see it spins out right there because it sensed that that car was too close. And it'll, yeah, it just crashed the wall. Great. But, um, so the next step after creating that sort of intelligence of the car was to make it follow certain paths of like a highway. And that's kind of where I abandoned the project. I was having difficulties getting the angles right and I wasn't too, um, I didn't know much about vectors at the time and that's kind of important for things like this. So that's where the project kind of stopped. It might be something I create later on. The idea was that I would just have a car, sort of like in Duck Out Drive, um, going down a highway, um, and it would be generating, not, maybe not generating, but like creating the highway as you go based on like set pieces, and there wouldn't be much of a goal aside from just like going down the highway and trying to um, avoid cars and not crash and just go as fast as you can or do whatever, which I find kind of fun, I don't know. But yeah, that's basically it for what happened with this simulation. And likewise, the extent of what I did for Duck Out Gaming. So like I said, I might do some more game development in the future. If I do anything though, hopefully I'll move to Unity, which is basically the in industry standard for um, game development, instead of using Blender, because Blender is really unstable. and voted a lot of problems, as you can see. So, that's basically it for me. I hope you enjoyed it, or maybe inspired to create games of your own, I don't know, could be. And uh, until next time. Mooak.